feet happy. Let's go. Come on.
board members, parents, students, staff members, old boys, and friends. Greetings and welcome to the St. George's College Valedictory Service 2021. Fifth and Sixth Form Georgians, special congratulations to you on this milestone. You have come to the end of a tough year, but you've made it through, and I'm sure that you've had some positive experiences despite the challenges, and you've learned some resilience along the way as well. We're happy to celebrate your successes with you today in this valedictory service, which is appropriate because valedictory means farewell, and today signifies an ending for you. For the sixth form students, it's an end to your high school years. For the fifth formers, it's an end to your CSEC syllabus. Endings can be sad. American sports reporter Ernie Harrell said simply, it's time to say goodbye. But I think goodbyes are sad, and I'd much rather say hello. Hello is a new adventure. Endings are not to be feared because every ending opens doors to new opportunities, new beginnings, and new adventures. You're not at the end of the road or teetering on the edge of a cliff. Rather, you're at a junction, a crossroads, where you must make decisions about what exciting challenge you will take on next in the journey called life. It's my hope that you will continue your education in a field that interests and excites you, and that you'll find success in that vocation. Remember to give back to your alma mater when you make your fortune. But I have a bigger hope for you. I hope that you will continue along the road to being a good human being who loves God and builds his kingdom by serving humanity with generosity, courage, and radical love. Whatever decision you make for the next step in life, let it be one that makes your parents and teachers proud, honors all Georgian graduates before you, and gives glory to God. We love you, and we wish for you the very best, and we're praying for your success in life. Greetings once again. Enjoy the service. But the hour comes, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth.
Let us pray. Dear Most Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us through another year. Thank you for helping us throughout the difficult times that would have posed themselves throughout this year, dear Lord. I am truly grateful, as I trust all of us are, dear Lord, for the people you have placed in our lives, our friends, family, and even staff members who have truly helped us and supported us in this time, especially the staff members who have and still continue to go above and beyond to help us to maximize our potential, dear Lord. Dear Lord, for this valedictory service, I pray that your presence fills the room, fills their screen and fills their respective rooms, dear Lord, everybody who is watching. Dear Lord, I beg of you to make it so that anything that is said here, the memories from the different reflections, dear Lord, let it be that there are things that stay in our minds wherever we go, dear Lord. So on any random day, it can be a source of laughter, a source of joy for us. These are the mercy I ask in your holy and most righteous name I pray, dear Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Responsive reading. Psalms 106, verses 1 to 5, and 47 to 48. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord, or fully declare His praise? Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them. That I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation, and join your inheritance in giving praise. Save us, Lord or God, and gather us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name, and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, together, let, let all, all the people, people say, say Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. The second reading is taken from 1 Chronicles 16, verse 11 through to 18. Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. Remember the wonders He has done his miracles and the judgment he pronounced. You his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as a portion you will inherit. Here endeth a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, Thanks be to God. Third reading, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16-18 Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will in Jesus Christ. Amen. Ricardo Perkins is originally from Kingston, Jamaica and the youngest of four siblings. He grew up in the Holy Trinity Cathedral Parish. Upon graduating from the University of West Indies, he worked for a while in the hospitality industry. After an initial call to something more, Ricardo began working at Mustard Seed Community, a non-profit Catholic organization in Jamaica. The time at Mustard Seed Communities proved to be instrumental in his vocation story as he claims to have encountered God uniquely and more presently while working with the residents of the Apostolates. Ricardo entered the novitiate in 2012 and took vows two years later, having completed the novitiate in the Dominican Republic. After he spent three years in Chicago, completing a master's in philosophy, he then returned to Jamaica, where he served as campus minister and taught tourism at St. George's College. After two years, he went to Berkeley, California, 
where he is currently studying theology in preparation for the ordination to the priesthood. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our guest speaker, Mr. Ricardo Perkins. The fact that we're here online celebrating is a very reminder that we have had. You have had a challenging year, but you should be joyful. You should be celebrating it. You made it. You went through the easy days and then tough days, probably coming to classes fresh from bed, face not washed, teeth not brushed, cameras off. Maybe you accidentally forgot to mute yourself, and so the entire class heard a noise that they were not supposed to have heard. However, you made it. You are here today because despite the challenges, you persevere. Again, feel proud of that. Look across to those cheering you on. Please take it in because you deserve it. Good. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy this moment. But know that the race is not finished. Enjoy the prize. But this is not the prize. You have a lot more coming your way, and you have a lot more to accomplish. You, each one of you, have a lot more to offer. Keep on dreaming. I quote a former Superman, Christopher Reeve. So many of our dreams at first seem impossible. Then they seem improbable. And then we summon the will. They soon become inevitable. Unquote. Let me put this in layman's term. Better yet. St. George's term. If you take a good look, you realize that when you arrive, and for those who have only spent two years here, you'll understand too, that you are far away from the gate. Just the fields and courts are beyond you. You can't really see the gate. You think about how far away it seems. You wonder if you will ever get there. While you are excited to be in a new school, a high school, while you proudly wear the crest, and be sure not to cover it with your backstrap. Because you wanted the world to know that you were now in high school. But you knew it would be some time away before you walk through that gate one final time as a student. As you move to grade 8, not only did you get closer to the gate, but you also had a better sight. Well, if you walked to the end of the corridor and dangerously peeked over, it wasn't yet time. Then came third form. The move along the path to the gate continues. And now you started to hide the crest. Not because your excitement and love for school has faded. But you would rather that others do not see that your crest is blue. You want to appear older. Then comes grade 10. Even closer to the gate. And a much clearer vision of it. Walking through the gate one last time as a student is becoming more and more a reality. You now had that coveted red crest and finally knew the subjects that you were approved for, whether six, seven, eight, or nine. Then came fifth form. And from that very first day, you can already feel the gate pulling you. Every time you leave the block, you see it. Leaving becomes inevitable. For some, this is the end of the road. That final trip through the gate as a student those two or five years went by quickly. It was a journey. It has been a journey. Surely, you may have encountered several defeats. Do not be down. It is part of life's process. Being here is a testament that you have pulled through. As the great late poet Maya Angelou reminds us, defeats are a part of life. I quote, You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can still come out of it. Unquote. Defeats are reminders that we have tried. If you have not failed, probably it is because you have not pushed yourself enough. But that is not you. I know that you have been pushed during these years. Am I not correct? This is because the school and your teachers expected excellence from you. No shortcuts, no easy way, rather a constant demand for excellence so that you can carry this attitude into life. Life will throw a lot of at you. 
the older you get, the more you get on your own, and the more life, the more life will continue to throw things at you. But you, you have been mightily prepared here at St. George's College. That is something you should wear proudly and later be reminded of when you get your first checkbook. But that is something for another day. You could have gotten a solid education somewhere else. And ladies, you certainly know that because you were educated before you came here. Duh. If not, Miss McFarlane would not have taken you in. But I hope that these two years, you have gotten a lot more than you bargained for. That is, because you have been to this great Jesuit institution, more was demanded of you. That is, Magis, the Jesuit principle that pushes you to always do more. Do more because you can always do more. If you get tired, take one more step. That one more step might be what gets you ahead. But when you get ahead, do not forget where you're coming from. Do not forget that you're here because of others. Your parents, siblings, grandparents, principal, friends, your form supervisor decreeing and declaring, all and all of your teachers, remember to say thank you. Show that gratitude. It is a reminder that we do not go through life on our own. Mbappe needs Neymar to get him the ball. Messi needs Iniesta to win the Champions League. Cristiano needs Madrid. Ale needs Chloe. And Courtney, Chloe, Kylie, and Kendall all needed Kim. We all need others. I quote from Melinda Gates. If you are successful, it is because somewhere, sometime, someone gave you a life or an idea that started you in the right direction. Remember also that you are indebted to life until you help some less fortunate person, just as you were helped. Unquote. Take this to heart. Not only should you constantly remind yourself of teamwork, but also that you have been formed to be men and women for others. This world needs you to be caring. It needs you to be of service. You might have gotten away from ministry this year. Still, you should remember the purpose. It is for you to recognize God in all people, even and especially those that are often unseen by society. Those kids wiping windscreens, the man on the street, those living in homes, and the man begging for food at KFC. As a person formed at St. George's College, you are expected to care for others. This is an important characteristic of who you are now. While you should not live in the past, know that the past has shaped who you are. The St. George's way is now in your DNA. And you have to be that person. It does not stop. Your teachers expect you to continue on the same path, whether you're returning next year or you're moving on. Always, always recognize goodness in others. See the face of God. Do not be ashamed about that. Know who you are. Build on what you have started. Do not forget the goodness of God. Remember that God has journeyed with you. The second reading earlier from First Chronicles challenge you, challenge all of us to be ever mindful of the many miracles and the many ways in which God has been present in these years. The many devotions you had, the days of recollection, all shape that reverence for God. All to remind you that you are specially made. Wear this proudly. Know that you have had a unique experience. Often when things get difficult, trust in God's process. Sometimes it may seem slow. By nature, we often want to rush things. We want it, and we want it now. However, we have to accept that some things are in God's time. Kairos. We have to be slow cooks. For those of us who know about cooking, there's a point when you have to turn down the flame under the rice that's on the stove. If not, all the water will dry out too quickly. The rice will burn, and it will still be uncooked. So yes, sometimes you will have to take things slowly. And even though you might not be seeing it, or even not feeling it, know that God is at work. God must be at work, because without God, nothing is possible. Therefore, do not be afraid to pray when it gets tough. As a person formed at St. George's College, 
it is not only when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. While yes, you have to be tough when it gets tough, but importantly, you pray. You remember God when life seems to be overwhelming. That's where you'll find comfort. That is where the sense of peace will be. And from that place, you'll be able to regroup and push forward. And keep pushing forward. God cannot be out of the equation. For you do everything, ad meorum thy glorium, for the greater glory of God. That reliance on God must be constant while the pandemic has forced you force us all to adapt and embrace changes. God and those core values you have learned over the years have to be constant in your life. Never stray from those. Yet, you need to embrace the concept of adapting. Because as you have seen over these past months, adapting is a part of what we have to do. Therefore, use this opportunity. Accept it as a teaching moment. Hopefully, you would have learned new ways to do things. You are now better prepared for life, which we have already said can be very unpredictable. But of course, you have been equipped with many tools to help you along. Use them as you journey. They are not for storage, but tools to help you understand and navigate life. Life will always impose things on you that you cannot control. But you still have the choice of how you're going to live through it. As Albert Einstein once said, life is like a bicycle. To keep your balance, you have to keep moving. So ladies and gentlemen, keep on moving. You have the tools, use them. As you leave, walk with a swag as you pass through the gate of excellence. Knowing that you're not that young boy that walked through that gate years ago. Neither are you that young lady that came to a new place a few years ago. You are much more than that person. You are better. You have been formed. You are a person with reverence for God, who pursues excellence. You have respect. You are disciplined. And you know the value of teamwork. You will take these with you as you move forward. As the inevitable is upon you, go set the world on fire. Walk with the memories. Enjoy and work hard in the present because you have been prepared for the future. The future is hopeful. It is bright. Walk towards the gate, waving your blue and white, shouting, Hail St. George's Alma Mater. My journey at St. George's College began in summer of 2016. I entered as a small skinny dude ready to make my mark. The initial phase was a shock, was as I was no longer surrounded by a mix of girls and boys but a set of wild crazy boys each trying to find their place in a new environment. Miss Pono, my form teacher, was a gem and I don't know how she managed to keep us in line. I later met Miss Gordon, my history teacher, who became my second mom. Imagine walking in class and a teacher calling you Stuart Little. That was her name for me. First one was a mix of challenges and fun as I, as I worked hard to adjust to the increased number of subjects and moving from class to class with all my with all my bag and pan. I learned the hard way about taking care of my belongings as my mom made me repay the amount spent to replace my bag of PE gears which I lost both first form and second form. There went my savings. Challenges aside, first form was a great experience for me and I was ready to face second form.
a reflection on the second form year. Second form was another year of transition into this, a new space of this noble institution. We had a number of interactions with the Covenant of Mercy High School. We had a class party, movie, and banquet, where most of us picked up our first girlfriends. Doing more subjects than in first form, we released our stress with lunchtime and after school ball games, where we would often get punished by Miss Gordon, our great supervisor, Mr. Suarez, or Mr. Christie, both being our vice principals. Coming to the end of the year, we have, however, witnessed them along with other teachers being stoned by water balloons. Who can forget those lunch times where we would just build and hold our vibes and pray with Miss Gordon in her office? These were times you cannot forget as we grow older. Reflection on third form. I remember the first day of grade nine, so clear, the bright sunshine and the cool breeze that blew on us. It was a year filled with laughter and joy. I would call it one of my best years. Playing football right in front of the second form block and running from Mr. Christie was especially fun for me and my friends. It was a year to remember. I liked English along with history and Spanish. At the start of the year, my average wasn't at the point where I wanted it to be. So I worked and pushed and studied and at the end of the year, I attained the average that I aimed for. We got the opportunity to camp at the school for a retreat. This retreat helped us to define the core values of the institution, which are leadership, teamwork, leadership and teamwork along with discipline. It helped us to know the true meaning of brotherhood. Third form was a really transitional year for us that brought us into the fourth form period. A reflection for fourth form. The state of your life is nothing more than a reflection of your mind. Throughout my years at St. George's College, I've always been told to be a man of integrity and to live by the core values of this institution. Fourth room was an extremely poignant stage of my life. I've always felt incompetent and inferior to those around me academically. That all changed when I saw a Japanese animation called Naruto. In this animation, Naruto was an orphan who was the trash of the ninja village he lived in. By the end of the animation, Naruto became the most influential and powerful ninja in history. It had filled me with so much inspiration, it had completely changed the way I viewed myself and my work. With this, I started to become more self-aware and confident, which caused my grades to go up along with my overall performance at the things I did, which subsequently made them become more impactful in my life. Inspiration brought me a long way, but I could not have achieved what I did without my teachers believing in my ability and driving me to challenge myself to become better, especially Mrs. Jazz Gordon, Ms. Powell and Mrs. McKay Mitchell, Mrs. Margaret Campbell, the principal, has constantly implored us students to try, strive to be our best selves. Even though I wasn't my best self, fourth form at St. George's College has undoubtedly brought me closer to that aspiration. Um, reflection on fifth form. Fifth form. This was the best of times and the worst of times. The best of times we could go to class in underwear and my George's t-shirts could go to class and play games at the same time, and the worst of times where it was very difficult to grasp concepts and complete assignments on time. But I had to be, had to be very disciplined and attend classes, which is a core value of this prestigious institution. I got to see the versatility in both teachers and students in learning and teaching, which was very good as everyone was adapting to change. This school year really took a toll on me when curricular activities were paused due to COVID, especially football. But we had virtual clubs and societies, but they were not the same. With not having even touched a fifth form class in this year, it's safe to say this year students and teachers were really determined in overcoming the biggest challenge of all, transition. Fifth form, the best of times and the worst of times. Best of times spent with my peers very much experienced and much loved teachers through our media of Zoom or Google Meet. Worst of times is realizing it's soon time to leave, either to continue our lives in tertiary institutions, but many of which, including myself, to continue learning at my alma mater in sixth form. Good day, everyone. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is, the, this is the beginning of many glorious achievements. We have done it. After seven years of triumph, tears, joys and failure, today we have succeeded. With enormous pleasure and pride, the class of 2021 is a part of the Great St. George's College legacy. As one of the spokesmen today, I undoubtedly say that there are moments we all wish to relive. Memories like giving Miss Mack a bag of trouble or even sitting down and talking to one of our favorite teachers about struggles in life. The laughter shared among our friends about random topics like our favorite childhood cartoons. The small moments to us matter like going to class not only to be educated but also to get a good laughter. It was always one student who never failed to meet the entire class to laugh. It was, moments, it was in these moments that our adolescent years felt justified. The retreat brought many of us closer, for many of us shared similar experiences and found confidence and companions which, when we decided to recall some of these moments. The absence of phones forced, forced many of us to experience nature. We wake up extremely early to hike up and down a steep hill, swimming in the pool, playing fun outdoor activities, and seeing Jordan Russell roll down the steep hill. This contributed to a good laughter and a wonderful moment. Let it be said here that St. George's College had produced marvelous men and breathtaking women as the pageant brought forth these various talents. With immense gratitude, I say there are no challenge too big and no solution too small. To stand there and say we did not struggle would be false. Not to focus, need not to focus on the negative. Our 6-2 reflection. Lower 6 had a, had a rather haphazard ending due to the pandemic, which caused school to close on March 14, 2020. However, despite the challenges, we, may, we managed to make the year one worth remembering. Other than sitting in front of our computer screens day after day for vital classes, we engage in a number of activities such as participating in clubs and societies, volunteering, campaigning and organizing in several virtual events. It was in these moments that our virtual events came to life through heatedly debating about social issues and sharing moments of fun and laughter. Throughout the year, we were resilient and constantly made an effort to find more diverse and creative ways to get things done that no longer seem possible due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In order to execute our initial goals and objectives, and as well as to combat issues that came along the way, we had to learn to be adaptable and embrace the challenges. Without a doubt, it was evident that the pandemic had a place on mental strain on the students. Accordingly, the head students organized a series of girls and men's talk men's talk sessions to empower and motivate the students of St. George's College, as well as to encourage proper mental health and coping strategies. Mr. Lambe on Comfort Zone, Mr. Shaw on Balance, and Father Tolo, Faith in Time of Despair. For this academic year, we were guided by the theme, Learn, Grow, Adapt. The future, no. The present demands it. I don't think any of us could expect it to be so vital. In everything we did last year, we had to find out new ways to do so. Outside of the change in how we had classes, we had a change in the regular parent-teachers consultation. Whereas opposed to parents coming to physically see teachers and waiting in a line, seeing students get flagged and embarrassed by their parents, it was, a, it was all virtual with the student leaders taking care of things behind the scenes with Mr. Anderson's assistance. Having completed the full tenure of, six, of the sixth form program, things were not how we expected it to be. In the past years, we had, been see, we had seen other six formers having fun with their friends and in the library working on different things. But our sixth form experience was an odd, was an odd blend of fun and stress. We had to force ourselves to be more driven while actively making time for our friends and for socialization. 
we had far less subjects than in CSEC and for some less than for 6-1, yet it felt like more than both of those were combined. There was more work on our part to secure our educational goals and much more. For our final year in particular, our expectations and past experiences could not lead to the prediction of, this, of how this year turned out. Let's look at this. Before this year, phones were prohibited on campus and we had to be swift and keen in our, within our surroundings to make sure they weren't taken away. And now, they are vital to our education and, can bring them, and we can bring them on campus without having to worry about our enough teachers taking them away. <laughs> we could also grow out our hair and style it for the ladies while going to classes. However, it will be different, it will be a different story when on campus. So all that time and effort of growing out our hair into afros and dreads had to go due to us following the school rules and being able to maintain the true image of a Georgian. Ladies and gentlemen, our time at this noble institution has gracefully ended. This is the closing of one chapter in which we have completed. We have done it. Ad maiorem the gloria, to the greater glory of God. Thank you. As you move forward in the next stage of your lives, may the blessing of Almighty God go with you and be with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.